Christ's spirit rises. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. A big, warm welcome if you're visiting with us for the first time this morning, either in person or online. Maybe you're looking for a new spiritual home. We're glad you're here. And a special welcome to Kay in the first pew this morning. She's there with her friend Storm, I believe, Storm. So welcome to you, Kay. So welcome, everybody. Welcome in friendship, welcome in faith, and welcome in God's all-inclusive love. We trust that this service will be a blessing to you and that you will be a blessing to others this coming week. Speaking of week, in our announcements this morning, the board meeting is this Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Judy White's Circle of Loss is Thursday at 2 p.m. And the pastoral care team is meeting on Monday, tomorrow at 1 p.m. So Circle of Loss on Thursday, pastoral care team on Monday at 1 p.m. Our new and improved website is up and running, largely in thanks to Craig Fairley and Linda Arnold. It is up, and on that note, we are going to call upon Gord Mitchell because he is going to tell us how we can put this new website into good, uh, into, into motion in a very easy way. Gord. Very good easy way. Good morning. Um, I have a couple of things to talk about today. This is Fun Script Sunday, order day. I'll be doing it tonight, and I need a whole lot more orders. I know things are busy, and you're getting exciting about spring, but Fun Script goes every month. Anyway, silent auction. Craig told us that it would be ready to go on the 7th of April. That's today. So at 12.01 this morning, the site was open. And you know what? We've had one and only one bidder. <laughs> really. I'm hoping to get seven or 800 bids by the time we get to 6 o'clock on the 21st of April. It's a great fundraiser. It's fun. It's easy and it's fun. It, if I can do it, it's, anybody can do it. It's easy. It really is. You all got an email on Friday afternoon from Linda Arnold. Talked about the website, fantastic website. Talked about silent auction. There's a little um, address, just click on that and it takes you right in. When you're in there, if you haven't already done it, when you scroll down through all 93 items, note the numbers that you want to bid on. And then when you start bidding, you can just do them on an orderly basis. And it works well, it's easy. And uh, the list of who's bidding so that we know who we're going to bid against is on, or who we want to bid up is on. Now, I didn't find that. I didn't know where that was. I guess there was no one there. There was a, <laughs> there, there was a tweak this morning. Oh, OK. So tweak there's the morning. odd little tweak. Hopefully, it's going to not I change guess. a whole lot. But anyway, thanks to uh, Craig. It's wonderful. Yeah. Now, I have gone ahead, and there's some people that are not very good at computers, and that's okay. We have made out copies of what's there to give to you so you can look things over. And what you can do is call me, and I will put the bids on for you. Next Sunday and the Sunday after, which is the 14th and 21st, we're going to be in Trinity Hall with individual bid sheets on the tables, and you can look them over. And you're going to... If you want to do some bidding or update what you've already done, note the numbers. Craig will have his laptop. Others will have their laptops, and they'll be able to put them on the website just like that. <laughs> OK? Great. Very good. Thank you very much. Good morning. On a custodial note, a couple of things. Um, thanks, Gord, for all your hard work, too. The, we're looking at a robot vacuum as a possibility to finish up in the Arnold Room. I would love feedback from anybody who is using one at home uh, as to 
yay, nay, brand, all that kind of stuff would be fabulous. So search me out or call Susie and she'll put me in touch with you. Uh, that would be awesome. Can you say that again? A what? Robot yes. vacuum. A robot vacuum. Oh, okay. A robot. Got it. That's what I got marked for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to put myself out of work, but you know, kind of, maybe. Anyway, so that would be lovely. Uh, the other is the summer note of Chuck goes to the lake to get on a big boat, Canoe's going to littler lakes to take his little boats, and we're going to be without summer people if we get stuck with minor things that may happen. If anybody wants to let Susie know that they would make themselves available through the summer months, um, that would help Chuck and myself and Susie out. Um, that would be great. Thank you. Um, and in the midst of all that, anybody who wants to help freshen up two rooms in the basement for paint um, painters, um, whether you're good at trim or whether you're just good at doing walls, um, an assist would help there too. So thanks. Great. Thank you, Judy. The UCW were busy this week in the kitchen and they were whipping up macaroni and cheese. Who likes macaroni and cheese? Come on, let me see. Okay, you can go out in the hall after the service and pick up your own ready to eat macaroni and cheese. All you have to do is eat it up and it's ready to go. Now, how easy is that? You can get a small one for $6 or you can get a larger one for $10. So let's show our support to the UCW and, and to Trinity and after church, go out there. First come, first serve. And I understand some of them have bits of bacon in there too, so you have to, have to look for the ones with the bacon. I think they have a B on them or something. Do they, Julie? Okay, so let's show our support um, afterwards. Now, Tomorrow is a very special day for a number of reasons, and of course we've all heard about the solar spectacular that's going to happen tomorrow afternoon, the big eclipse. But there's another very important event taking place tomorrow. Our very own Wanda Tizard. Wanda, put your hand up. Wanda is turning 98 years old tomorrow. <laughs> Lovely. And um, in, instead of cards and flowers, Wanda has asked if we could make a donation to the church in honor of her 98th birthday. I think you're going to make the triple digits, Wanda. I think you're going to make the triple digits. But for now, let's raise our voices and let's sing happy birthday to our senior, most senior member of Trinity, Wanda. <laughs> Many more. Did you want to say anything, Wanda? Thank you. <laughs> That's wonderful. Best wishes from all of us here. Okay, God moments this week. Yes, Craig. Through the miracle of technology, I was able to talk to Kathy this morning. She has landed safely in Nairobi. Amen. Amen. We've been watching. I've been watching the pictures on Facebook. So good flight. She's there. And wow. Thank you for that update. We'll be watching her and holding her in our prayers. Yes. Carrie. This coming Thursday, I'm going to be celebrating one year sober. And uh, it's been a lot of Amen. Amen. That's an Easter moment. That's a hope rising moment, a life giving moment. Well done. Well done, Carrie. Anybody else? All right. Let's just take a couple of moments, shall we? Time to breathe. Time to settle in and to listen to that still small voice within. 
God is as near as the breath that we take. Let us try to hear once again those healing words that Jesus spoke to the disciples in the upper room. Peace be with you. Amen. Join me now in the call to worship as printed inside your order of service and as will appear on your screens at home. On this first day of the week, calling us into our beloved community, Allowing our doubts and our questions. Opening our hearts and bringing us renewed peace. Our opening hymn on this second Sunday in Eastertide, This is a Day That God Has Made. light our Christ candle this morning, we are reminded that we too are holy candles called to spread Christ's light into the world. The light reminds us that the darkness has not overwhelmed us and that the flame of the risen Christ can still rekindle the embers in us all. And now I'm going to call upon our light beamers to come forward, reach, and Ethan and Jack are back today. I'm so glad to see them. Come on over here. All right. So you hold hands, and then you hold, you hold Reach's hand. Okay, and then Reach is going to put her hand on my elbow. There we go. And may the light of Christ continue to shine around us, but most importantly, through us. Amen. And we'll see you in a few minutes for our light beamer time, okay? All right. Let us pray. God of life, come speak to us. Your peaceful melodies touch our hearts especially when they are trouble. Into our fear and our closed hearts, speak words of courage and peace. Into our doubt, speak words of trust and curiosity. May your spirit embolden our faith 
so we may become carriers of resurrection hope in our world here and now. Amen. Our light beamer song this morning can be found in our More Voices hymn book. That's the soft covered hymn book in your pew. Number 48, Jump for Joy, and we're going to stand for this hymn. have an order of service? Does, did everybody get an order of service today? I know we ran out last week, so I just want to make sure everybody has one. Okay, that's great. So now I'm going to call upon our light beamers to come forward for their moment. Remember, be the peace of Christ. 
Christ be with you. Okay? All right. Oh, just go over there by reach. Just stand over there by reach. And do you need the mic or can you use your big voices? Big voices. Okay. One, two, three. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Amen. All right. pray. Christ of the eternally pierced hands and body, 
May the scriptures we read speak into our questions and our doubts. May the words satisfy our hearts with a deep and meaningful experience of resurrection today and always. Amen. The New Testament lesson is taken from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 29. Jesus appears to the disciples. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Jesus and Thomas. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my hand, in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Hear what the risen spirit is saying to our hearts. Amen. Thank you, Shirley. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our light and our risen hope. Amen. Well, Easter weekend has come and gone. Families are back home. The chocolate is almost all eaten. And the pea soup you made from the ham bone is getting dangerously low. The sugar and spiritual high of Easter Sunday may be starting to wear off. But contrary to popular belief, Easter lasts for 50 days in the life of the church. That's actually 10 days longer than the season of Lent. And it wraps up with the celebration of Pentecost on May 19th. We call this season Eastertide, and we'll be hearing plenty of stories about the resurrection in the coming weeks. But where does the gospel take us today? It takes us behind closed doors. Jesus is making one of his many encore appearances. And this one is with the disciples who have barred themselves in the upper room since Jesus was put to death. Their leader, their teacher, is dead, executed like a common criminal. They're anxious and they're afraid, and they are huddling together in fear that they may be next. 
they are likely feeling guilty and ashamed for having abandoned Jesus in his hour of need. Then suddenly, like out of thin air, Jesus appears to them in the middle of the room. He comes through the locked doors. And what are Jesus' first words? Peace be with you. No condemnation, no disapproval, no signs of disappointment that his friends have let him down. He doesn't say, why did you abandon me? Why did you leave me hanging there? Just peace. Jesus knows what's in their hearts and why they have locked the doors. So I wonder what this scripture teaches us today. It teaches us that when love enters the room, it can break the locks off the disciples' hearts, offering forgiveness, freedom, and peace. It teaches us that locked doors are no problem for the risen spirit of Christ. Jesus brings new life to his disciples and he can bring the same to us as well. Whatever doors we may have bolted shut, God can come in the midst of our fear and say these words, peace be with you. When we embrace Jesus as Thomas eventually does, we too can come out of hiding. The locks drop off our hearts and we no longer have to live in fear. We all have doors we hide behind. Maybe it's the door of perfection, the door of self-doubt, of low self-worth. Maybe it's the door of disappointment, the door of addictions, the door of not being enough. And maybe like the disciples, it's a door of guilt and shame. We all have places in our hearts that need the healing love of Christ. But so often, like the disciples, we hide out. We live in fear, not in faith. But the good news this morning is God will find us right where we are and break the locks off our closed hearts and lead us back to a life of fresh starts and new possibilities. You see, when we stay behind our closed and locked doors and hearts, it's just like one big eclipse. Our light is unable to break through, and we are hiding ourselves from God's healing grace. Oh, society likes to tell us that we should be strong and we should not show our weakness and we need to keep our tears to ourselves. We need to put on our big girl pants or our big boy pants and get on with it. But this attitude doesn't do anybody any favors. As Father Richard Rohr has written, and I quote, a pain that is not transformed is transmitted. In other words, hurting people will hurt other people. Fear paralyzes us just like a stroke can paralyze our physical body. Fear keeps us from being free, from having peace in our own hearts. Fear keeps us locked up inside, just like those disciples in the upper room. Writer Henry Ward Beecher said, every day has two handles. We can take hold of it with the handle of fear or the handle 
of faith. So what about this Thomas guy? What handle is he holding on to today? Is it fear or is it faith? You see, I believe Thomas got a bit of a raw deal in church tradition over the years. I believe that doubting Thomas is a little bit of a misnomer. Do we say denying Peter? I mean, Peter denied knowing Jesus three times, but do we say that's denying Peter? No, but we call Thomas doubting, and yet, and yet, he is the only one that makes the statement of faith, my Lord and my God. He's the only one, when Jesus spoke about the suffering that was going to be coming towards him as he made his way to Jerusalem, he's the only one that said, yes, Lord, let's get going. Yeah, Thomas has gotten a bad rap in my books. Thomas misses the first resurrection appearance, and when the disciples tell him about it, he refuses to accept a secondhand faith. Was Thomas wrong to doubt the resurrection and to want a first hand experience of Jesus himself? I don't think so. But it's far easier to settle for a secondhand faith. It's far simpler if we ignore our questions, if we ignore our doubts, and just blindly accept whatever we're taught by our teachers, preachers, or friends. But you see, here's the thing. Real faith is a first-hand faith. Thomas doesn't want any hand-me-down faith. Thomas wants an up-close and personal faith. And we too must remain committed to finding our own personal encounter with that risen spirit of Christ because it's only a first-hand faith that can really sustain us and really cause that transformation that we are looking for in our hearts and in our lives. I know I shared the story with you about how I decided not to attend the Atlantic School of Theology in Halifax when I was in my early 20s. I decided not to go because I had too many questions. I had too many unanswered questions, and yes, I had too many doubts. Nobody ever said, Diane, it's okay to have doubts. It's okay to have questions. So I felt that I was either losing my faith or my faith wasn't strong enough. In fact, I thought that having questions and having doubts was wrong. So consequently, I postponed my decision to join the ministry for 20 years. Fast forward to today, and I stand before you as an ordained minister of the United Church of Canada, and I still have my doubts. And I still have my questions that aren't answered. But what I have learned over the years that it's absolutely okay to have questions and to have doubts. And do you know what else I learned? The more you know, the more you know you don't know. Yeah, just think about that for a minute. Questions and doubts are not contrary to popular belief, the enemy of faith. In fact, they can lead to a more mature and fruitful kind of faith. I think they play a positive role in our spiritual maturity and our faith development. Theologian Frederick Bachner in his book called Wishful Thinking writes, and I quote, Doubts are the ants in the pants of faith. 
They keep it awake and they keep it moving. Are you committed to moving towards an authentic, personal, and transforming faith? This is what people are looking for today. They don't want just a head knowledge about God. They don't want just to hear the scriptures read, if indeed they even want to hear the scriptures read. What they do want is a first hand experience of the risen spirit of Christ, just like Thomas. People want a practice of faith that aligns with their values and who they are. Not hide behind the doors of pretense and make-believe and fear of judgment and criticism. Interestingly enough, I have had a number of conversations with Thomasus in the last six months. One woman told me that she sat in an evangelical church for years, most of her life, in fact, as the pastor continually condemned people who were homosexual. But here's the kicker, she was gay. She told me her mother even wanted to go to Toronto for treatment. We all know what that treatment was, that conversion therapy. I was very relieved to hear that she refused. Fortunately, after decades of being burned up spiritually, emotionally, and physically behind locked hearts and locked minds, this woman is now free. And she is experiencing for the first time the first-hand reality of resurrection in her own life. New hope and new beginnings. She left her family church and she's rolled away that stone of certainty and that stone of belonging. That was not an easy thing to do. She'd been in that church her whole life. Her grandparents had helped build the church. And she left for a faith that doesn't have all the answers. She's now exploring. She's questioning. And she's reconstructing her faith. So like Thomas, she will have a faith that's real and life-giving and most importantly, true to who she is as God's beloved daughter. This woman, I believe, is typical of so many people today who are spiritually hungry, and they want a faith that resonates deep within their hearts. People want a faith that doesn't require them to leave their brains at the door before entering the church community. These spiritual seekers are like Thomas, and they too want to experience and wrap their minds and souls around something for themselves. Just because you have doubts doesn't mean you don't have faith. In truth, it's quite the opposite. Thomas is the only di disciple who proclaims to Jesus, my Lord and my God. That's a statement of faith. No secondhand hand-me-down faith for Thomas. He wants the real deal and good for him. Like Thomas, maybe you're searching for a more personal, a more authentic, Jesus-centric faith. And if you are, I applaud you and I applaud your spiritual exploration. Writer Brian McLaren says, for a new song of faith to sing in you and in us, the silence of doubt is golden. Just remember, it's love 
that always blows the locks off our fear-filled and closed hearts. And the good news this morning is the risen spirit of Christ gives us the keys to unlock the doors that we may be hiding behind. Maybe we've been hiding behind these doors our whole lives, just like that middle-aged woman who decided to break up with her church family after all these years. She can now finally experience the peace that the risen spirit of Christ brings. And as we unlock the doors with God's love, we too are set free. And then we can hear these healing and forgiving words. Peace be with you. All glory be to God. Amen. For the love of the world, Jesus offered everything he had, even life itself. In response to this powerful gift of love, let us share our gifts so others too may feel God's love and healing. Our morning tithes and offerings will now be received.
Here is the lot of our hearts. Here is our desire to make a better world. Bless these gifts, and may they be used to bring new life to those who need it most. Bless us too, and help us to bring new hope and new possibilities to our world. And now as we remain seated, let's sing hymn number 400, shall we? Lord, listen to your children praying. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Companion God, we come before you today, some with hearts bursting with gratitude and joy for the week that is passing. For others, it's been a tough week, bringing with it unexpected challenges and speed bumps. We give thanks that here in our faith community, we can bring whatever is on our hearts, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Here, we know that our burdens can be lifted and our joys can be shared and celebrated. We are grateful that Jesus is here among us, gently and patiently breaking through our insecurities and doubts calling us out into a life of faith. Love can break through our locked and hardened hearts and speak a word of peace. Empower us to move beyond our locked doors of fear. Help us to have less fret and more faith. Spirit of life, strengthen our faith so we may become carriers of resurrection hope to our friends, our families, and into our community. We bring before you now all those who are in need of your healing touch in mind, body, or spirit. Be with those who are continuing with their cancer treatments Milt Calder and Rick Waring, give them that inner strength they need to cross the finish line of their treatments. Be with Kathy Fairley and her friends as they travel to Africa to be the hands, the feet, and the heart of Christ to people who need to feel your love and your blessing. Bless the young children in that orphanage and may they feel your love through the kind and caring actions of others. And thank you for the generosity of this congregation that is helping make their worlds a little bit gentler and a whole lot brighter. Now, in the silence of our hearts, we lift up to you our own personal cares and concerns. God, hear all our prayers, and in your love, answer. Now in the words that Jesus, our spiritual master, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Our closing hymn in our service today, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, give thanks. You'll find it in your Voices United hymn book 179. give you peace.